Hello, this is Keith Hughes, as you can probably tell, um, and welcome to my uh, cover reveal show. Uh, so the, the book that I'm going to do this on is called Borrow Time. It's something that I've been working on for a very, 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 very long time. Um, I, I first released it on patiobooks.com uh, back in 2009, in fact, July of 2009, so we just passed the nine-year anniversary of that. Uh, and it's been sitting there and I wanted to get it, I wanted to do a new version of it. I wanted to clean it up and, and I got so far in that process and I actually made the decision last year to do a complete rewrite on it. So, I mean, I'm, I'm talking total, uh, yes, yes, a very, 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 very long time. A lot of varies in there. And hi, Maureen. Um, so I rewrote it from scratch. I did a total blank page. I mean, I used the other one as kind of a, a, a outline a little bit, but I, I rewrote it totally from scratch. And then it went to um, it went to uh, a professional editor. And so this book has really been, I think, pretty well polished, and I'm really proud of it. And I also got a professional cover for it, which is something the original version never had. It had what I put together, which was mm, so-so. Uh, so that's the point of this show is that uh, I'm going to show you my cover. I'm going to share a little bit of the story with you. And I'm also going to share the release date because I'm ready to get this puppy out in the real world and let people start to read it. Um, can I turn my volume off on my end? Not really. Uh, I'll, I'll move the mic a little bit closer. Hopefully that helps. Um, and I'll get a little closer to it, maybe. Uh, and I'll talk louder. A lot for me to remember. So um, I've had this, you know, I've, as I say, I've been working on this for a long time. I've actually had the covers for, um, golly, over a year and a half. Uh, and I've been, I have been um, teasing this image for quite some time. Uh, you know, this has been around. Um, this has been around on my website and it's been my profile pic and, and all these things. And, and it's been there for a long time to the point where I'm kind of sick of looking at it personally, but, but, you know, I've been looking forward to this date when I can finally, um, show you the whole thing. And that day is today. Um, so uh, let's let's let's. I'm not going to tease you anymore. Let's go ahead and and keep going. And I'm going to show you what the actual cover looks like. And it is that. So there is the borrowed time cover. Now you notice that there's a new. It's actually got a new title. It's not just borrowed time anymore. Uh, one of the things that frustrated me with coming up with a series uh, name for this was that borrowed time as a phrase is way overused. It is, uh, if you go to Amazon and search for borrowed time books, there's a billion of them out there. And that's not that much of an exaggeration. Um, so uh, I wanted to come up with something and I and after a lot of back and forth you know, and, and, and Jelaine, the wife, helping me out and whatnot, we ended up with Time Hunt, which I really love. So it's gonna be known as the Time Hunt series instead of the borrowed time chronology, which is what I used to call it. But this cover here, was created by uh, Starla Hudson, and I love it. I love, we actually have, I actually have covers, she's made me covers for the first three books in this series, and they all have this model on them. So we've got some consistency there. We got the Detroit skyline there because it takes place in Detroit. Um, and I just, you know, blue's my favorite color, so the overall blueness of this is just, it appeals to me quite a bit, quite a bit. So. So yeah, I am really geeked to be able to get this out there and let people see it. And not only that, but reveal the name of Time Hunt. Um, I've got a Borrowed Time Chronology uh, Facebook page that I'm going to be, be renaming to Time Hunt. I've got a Borrowed Time Chronology Twitter account that I'm going to be renaming to Time Hunt. Um, so, so yeah, I'm looking forward to finally getting all that done. I've been kind of sitting on this name forever. And, uh, and so now we got all that done. So I'm really, really, really pleased about that. So, ta-da, the cover. Uh, 
I hope you like it. And uh, thanks, Leanna. I can see you do. It's uh, I, I like it very, very much. So now what I want to do is while you're gazing at the beauty of this cover, I want to share a chapter with you from this book. Um, so let's do that. So this is a, a uh, chapter 11 from the book. Um, so this kind of settled up a little bit. So our main character, uh, a, a guy by the name of Ness Relevant, he has a friend and mentor who is a um, research physicist, and he has created a time machine and put it into a what, what was used to be called a personal digital assistant, or a PDA. So this, this uh, friend and mentor, whose name is Dr. Bertrand, uh, has mailed that to Ness in a box, you know, snail mail, the way we used to back in the day. And Ness has received this, and he's been given a task by a doctor to please keep this safe, because um, the doctor worked for a company called Intellisys, and Intellisys sent people to come and get this thing. It's their property. They want it back. They have plans. And so Ness finds himself on the run with this guy named Glenn on his tail, who he's seen murder people, and he's got this set of uh, trio of thugs that are following him, which he's nicknamed uh, Thing 1 and Thing 2 and Thing 3, kind of like Cat in a Hat. Um, and so Ness is, is reacting to what uh, Dr. Bertrand has asked him to do and also trying to keep out of these bad guys' hands. So let's get into it. Chapter 11, A Giant Leap Backward. Wednesday, September 10th, 2008, 11.59 a.m. The bus's spongy suspension made it even a simple act like yawning difficult, as each bump in the road translated into an exaggerated bounce. The constant up and down became reminiscent of being on the water during a bit of weather. The descent from the top of one such movement had, te had Nessa's teeth clacking together painfully. He rubbed his jaw with a grimace. Another yawn tried to erupt, but Ness refused to open his mouth. Dr. Bertrand's message had been clear. Something had been left for him around when they'd first met. But getting there would not be as simple as going to a specific location. He had to go to a specific time as well. It wasn't a short hop of a few hours or even a few days. Ness needed to make a major leap of more than 20 years and 200 miles. His biggest concern involved finding a location where he could jump back safely. He needed some place which, which had been unchanged for decades, where walls and doors had not been remodeled into different positions over the years. Many of the buildings in the suburbs he knew well were either new or had been reconstructed at various points. Ness had considered those requirements as he ate a breakfast sandwich he'd purchased at a gas station. He had rejected various options in the suburbs and instead focused on the city proper as, po as possible launching points. Detroit had numerous gems that had been around for far longer than he had been alive. The question remained, which one could he gain access to? A memory sparked, and Ness smiled. He had already visited the perfect place, and he could get there by bus. A couple of years before, the Detroit Public Library had hosted a photography exhibition. For a time, Ness had toyed with the idea of submitting one of his landscapes. In the end, he decided not to, but he had made a point to see the exhibit when it opened. He'd seen some marvelous photographs there, but the building itself had captured his eye. The bus rumbled to a halt at a stop. He joined one or two others in filing out the door and onto the sidewalk. He regarded the exterior of the venerable old building. Over 150 years old, the white marble lining exterior still looked fresh and cool. Black lettering in a classic typeface above the matching doors identified the building, hinting at its age without appearing outdated. Brass door handles gleamed in the morning sun, polished by countless hands over the many years, inviting passers-by to enter and partake of the library's mysteries. Ness passed through those portals where identical life-size sculptures of swans set in alcoves on either side greeted him. They were lit from behind, making the white stone glow. 
The inner walls were lined in the same pale marble as outside, giving an impression of staid permanence. Walking from room to room, he found a surprising number of people in almost every space. The decor changed from section to section. One edition at the back exhibited classic 1960s architecture, whereas others were all dark wooden beams and plaster walls. Artwork had, artwork had been placed everywhere, almost making it a museum in its own right. As it, as it had during his previous visit, Diego Rivera's vast mural spanning several walls transfixed him for long minutes. When he finally finished his tour of the public areas, he still had not found a safe launching point. More to the point, he could not identify any place he could unexpectedly pop into existence many years in the past without causing a disturbance. Most of the furniture looked somewhat contemporary, and the shelves were up to date as well. There were scuffs on the floor indicating that they may have been in different configurations in the past, and pretty much every area he visited had at least a couple of people in it. He might have to find some place else to launch his journey. Ness headed for the exit. His shoulders slumped. A pressing need drove him to visit the men's room before leaving, though. As soon as he entered, his disappointment disappeared. If he didn't know the PDA remained untouched in his pocket, he might have assumed he had already traveled back in time. The sinks, along with the mass matching fixtures, dated back to the 1930s. The cubicle walls were newer, but appeared to have been installed in, during the early years of Lyndon B. Johnson's presidency. A peek inside showed the toilets matching the other plumbing in the room. It's perfect. Ness smiled. After locking himself into one of the stalls, he performed the deed that had brought him to the room in the first place. Then he retrieved the PDA. Doing a little math in his head, Ness set the device for March 27, 1987. He would arrive midway through the spring semester of his junior year in college, which included his first physics course taught by Dr. Bertrand. The date had no special significance he could recall, but because it was a weekday, he should be able to catch the professor in his office. He set the arrival time to 7 o'clock in the morning. The stall should be empty because the library would be closed. Taking a second to steel himself for the journey, Ness centered himself in the open space in front of the toilet before pressing the launch button. He experienced the same sensations as before, but the pouring of himself from one time to another took infinitely longer. Finally, color returned to his world. Ness wrinkled his nose. The odor was the first indication that the bathroom held other occupants. Even worse, the rustling of a newspaper from behind signified he shared the stall with someone else. Ness turned to see a man in a janitor's uniform staring at him over a copy of the Detroit Free, the Detroit Free Press. Resisting the urge to study the front of the paper for the date, he turned to unlock and open the door. I am so sorry. He stepped out quickly. I assumed the stall was empty. When he shut the door again, he heard the stall's occupant, occupant engage the latch and then rattle it a bit to test the lock. Ness escaped before the janitor could ask about his presence there hours before the library opened. He made his way out the front doors without encountering anyone else. From the sidewalk, Ness surveyed the street. The cars that passed ranged from models made in the 1960s and 70s to what would be the newer 1980s vehicles. The sight reminded him of the annual Dream Cruise, a roving classic car show that crept up and down Woodward Avenue one weekend every summer. A quick examination of a nearby newspaper box confirmed he had traveled to 1987, and tension eased in his back and head. He existed beyond the grasp of Glenn and his things. Traffic was light so early in the morning, so he jaywalked to the other side of the street and waited in front of the Detroit Institute of Arts for the northbound bus. After only a few minutes, it arrived, and he grinned at the cheap fare compared to 2008. He sat near the door, as the ride along Woodward Avenue would be short. A map affixed to the first bus stop of the day confirmed he would need to ride only a few blocks north to the main bus station. In all honesty, he could have gone on foot but he wanted to get there as soon as possible. 
A short time later, Nest Spot fair for a greyhound heading to Kalamazoo, the home of his alma mater. Once again, he found himself appreciating the prices in this time compared to his future. Ness felt a surge of panic when he handed over one of the newer $20 bills from his wallet. The cashier puzzled over the large offset image of Andrew Jackson, but Ness plucked the bill back and muttered something about Monopoly money. He dipped into Dr. Patron's envelope of period-specific cash and handed her one of the 20s. The cashier looked at it curiously for a brief second, but the familiar bill passed muster, and she counted out his change. A bag of chips and a Sprite from a vending machine served as a second breakfast while he waited until boarding time. He watched from a slightly comfortable seat in the station as other travelers went about their business. The focus of his life for the last two days had disappeared, the deep-seated fear of being caught by the minions of Intellisys. The stress caused by his circumstance had the muscles in his back nodding with dread. Ness was only beginning to understand how much it had affected him. Safe from Glenn and his goons for the time being, he reveled in a sensation of freedom. There was no way they could find him now. He had lost himself in the past. All right, that is the excerpt. And hi to Peter and Adam who joined the uh, the, the live broadcast. Uh, great to see you guys here. That was the excerpt from Time Hunt Borrowed Time. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, 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 I like that particular scene, especially him kind of arriving on top of the guy in the bathroom. That would be a bit embarrassing. So let me get to my next order of business, and that is to reveal the launch date for this bad boy. And without further ado, here it is. August 17th, 2018 will be the date that this goes live on Amazon. It will be available as an ebook on Amazon. It will be available in the Kindle Unlimited program. If you do that, so you, if you are a Kindle Unlimited customer, you could actually read it for free. Uh, and that's the only place I'm going to put it. I'm going to be Amazon exclusive with this. Now, if you are a Kobo kind of person or some other ebook reader that is EPUB format, and you probably know what that is if you're one of those folks, um, I'm, I'm not selling on those platforms. But what I'll do is if you buy it on Amazon and you send me a copy of your receipt, I will email you an EPUB because I don't want people not to read it if they want to read it. But if they got an EPUB device, I don't want them to feel locked out. So August 17th, 2018, at a time to be revealed later, I'm going to do another one of these um, uh, 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 live videos. I'm losing my words here. Uh, and I'm probably going to do another reading for you from the book, from a different from a different part of the book, not this section. So you got that to look forward to. I will be announcing the exact time. I haven't settled on a time just yet for that, but it will be sometime uh, on August 17th, which is a Friday. Uh, and it'll be sometime this time or earlier um, in the day. So so that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. That's the cover. That's the uh, excerpt, and that's the date, August 17th. So uh, I think uh, we will let that be that. I want to thank everybody who has joined me on the live video. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate the support. Uh, thank everybody that's watched all of this on Facebook. It's going to be live on Facebook in a little bit. I'm going to make it available on my, on my pages there. I'm going to... Probably tomorrow I will get it available on Twitter, and I'm hoping to get it on um, on the YouTube as well. But for now, I think that's it for today. Uh, I'm once again thank everybody for their support, for watching, for listening. I hope you you dug the story that you heard, and I hope you're excited for the launch of this book as much as I am. So uh, I will talk to you on the 17th, and until then. Be seeing you.